So in this chapter, we're going to talk about a lot about graphing and, and graphs and interpreting these graphs. Uh, so to do that, we need to remember about the coordinate plane. Uh, and so this is something you've probably seen before, hopefully in introductory algebra. Um, and so the cor just a quick refresh on what the coordinate plane is. If you remember all everything about the coordinate plane and how to graph things, then you can certainly skip this video. But just a quick refresher on the coordinate plane. So the coordinate plane, <coughs> or also known as the Cartesian coordinate system, what we do is we, it's a two-dimensional way to represent, to represent something, uh, to represent two numbers that go together. So what we do is we take uh, one number line, right, that starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, four, five, and these are supposed to be evenly spaced apart. So just one number line horizontally, and the arrows indicate the number line keeps going on and on forever. And so this is, this is one number. This is how we re represent one number with a number line, right? If we wanted to represent the number four, we just put a dot on the number four. But if we have two numbers that go together that we want to represent, we have to have two number lines. And so what we do is we take and we make a vertical number line. So think about it like if you had a temperature, right? A thermometer is a ver sort of a vertical number line. Um, it's numbers represented vertically. So same thing. Um, they cross at zero where they're both number lines are zero. So this point is zero for bo both numbers. So it, it goes up. So the up is the positive direction, just like on a thermometer. And the down, we are going down. So this is our negative direction. Okay. So that is the Cartesian coordinate system, or the coordinate plane uh, for short. Um, and so how do we, what do we do with this? Well, Usually what we do is we want to represent two numbers that go together. So a lot of times that's given by an equation. Um, you might have seen something like this, y equals 2 times x plus 1. So we make x our horizontal, usually, and y our vertical number line. So x, is, x represents, uh, the, the horizontal number line represents the x's, and the vertical number line represents the y's. And so we have some numbers that go together for some reason. Either we put them together, they go together because if we plug both of these, we plug a ordered pair into here or two numbers into here, a number for x and a number of y, and they make that a true statement. That's usually what you see mostly up until now. Um, the x we call the, are the number, or whatever's being represented on the horizontal axis. Um, usually you've probably seen it so far as an x. Uh, this is called the independent variable. All right, so whatever's being represented here, and whatever's being represented on the vertical is called the dependent variable. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay. So independent variable on the horizontal and the dependent variable on the vertical. Um, the reason why it's called the dependent variable is because usually we're talking about something where we put numbers in for whatever's on the horizontal and we get something out for the vertical. So for the number, for the whatever's being represented on the vertical axis. So something like um, dosage over time, right? Uh, so time is independent. You can't change time. The dosage is what's going to change based on time. So that's why it is, dep it's, it is dependent on, on the time. So it's dependent on what's on the horizontal axis. So that's why we called it the dependent variable. Um, <coughs> so the coordinate plane, when we cross these two number lines, notice we make four sections. These four sections are called quadrants, quad for four. So this guy is called the quadrant one, and then it goes counterclockwise. So we start in the positive, positive right, where both what's on the horizontal axis and what's on the vertical axis are positive. We start there, that's quadrant one, and then go counterclockwise, quadrant, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, okay? And we write them as Roman numerals, you know, to be fancy. But uh, yeah, so if someone says, 
plot me a point in quadrant one, right, you know you go to this upper right quadrant where both the x's and y's are positive. All right, so how do we use this coordinate system? Well, like I said, we use it to plot points that go together. Um, so let's see if we can plot some points just to refresh. Uh, oh, one last thing. The spot where both number lines cross is called the origin, right? So both number lines start there at zero, so the x is zero and the y is zero. So if I have a point, let's say, in my coordinate plane, my x, what's on my horizontal axis is three, right? I can see if I do, 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 go up, that's at three, and if I go over, right, I see the y is two. So how do we represent that? Well, we represent that by writing in parentheses the, f the coordinate of the first number we call, or the number our dot's at, according to the first number, we call that a coordinate. So 3, and then the second number always represents what's on the vertical axis, so 2. So we would represent this point as the number 3, or as the ordered pair, we call this an ordered pair, 3, 2. All right, so if I gave you an ordered pair, so say something like negative 5, I don't know, 4, could we find that ordered pair on our coordinate plane? Well, sure. So what I do, so the negative 5, this represents the, what's on the, this represents the horizontal, or the x, right? and the second number, the 4, represents the y. So first I find the negative 5 on the x-axis, on that horizontal axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then and, and in the negative direction, not the positive direction, right? And then I go vertically, I'm at 4, so I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is much easier if you have graph paper, right? So there's my point, negative 5, 4. So the first number always represents where you're at on the horizontal axis, and the second number represents where you're at on the vertical axis. Usually the first number, the horizontal axis we call x, and the vertical axis we call y, but we really could call it anything we want. These, these x's and y's are just labels for variables that represent some number. Okay, so how is this good for healthcare? Um, so there are actually quite a few graphs and charts in healthcare. Uh, one really easy example that comes to my mind is height versus weight. So if you have children and you take them to the doctor when they're very small, they print you out a height and weight chart and show you where your child's at, their, their growth is at on that chart. So what happens a lot in healthcare, because height is not negative or weight is not neg a negative number, what happens is when we look at these charts, we just take the first quadrant of our coordinate plane. So you could have a height like, um, so you could have, well, we should probably go by fives. That's probably more realistic, right? So I'm just writing up. Let's go by feet. Nah, we'll go by six inches. So six, 12, 18, 24, right? And so on. So this is, oops, we want weight. Yeah. <laughs> so six, 12, 18, 24, right, and so on and so forth, 30, 36. So if this is height in inches versus on the vertical is weight in pounds, right? 
and it could be kilograms or whatever, right? So <clears throat> we've got this graph. We've got height in inches versus weight in pounds, and that's just one example, and it works just like um, our, our coordinate system, our Cartesian plane that you learned about when you took introductory algebra. So we have our x, right, our y, our independent variable versus our dependent variable. Um, and we can plot points in this just like we plot points on the coordinate plane. Um, and there are a few things that we're going to talk about in this section that we can use to represent, we can use a coordinate plane to represent. So you'll see those come up in the next few sections.